What's going on, Seahawks fans? It's Mitchell Renz here from Chat Sports. And coming up on today's show, we're going to be talking about the Seattle Seahawks hosting free agent offensive guard Greg Van Roten. On top of that, at the back end of the show, new top 30 visit scheduled. I know some of y'all are probably like, well, wait a minute. This is not Tyler Jones here. I'm Mitchell Renz. I'm host of our Raiders Report show. And I thought I can step in and give you guys the lowdown on everything you need to know about Greg Van Roten. But hey, I want to see. I've heard a lot of good things about the 12s out there. Show me some love. And if you want John Schneider to improve, this Seattle interior offensive line, I want you to click that like button right now. I'm going to challenge all y'all. I know the nation shows out. I want to see how the 12 show out. I want this to be the most liked video on this channel. Will you accept my challenge? Let's talk a little bit here about Greg Van Roten because he is visiting with the Seattle Seahawks. And I know some of y'all are probably like, well, wait a minute, Mitch. Why are you so excited about this? I'm excited about this because a lot of times the big guys on the interior don't get the attention that they deserve. And I know the best Seahawks teams from years past, when good teams concentrate on the interior offensive line, I believe that you win in the trenches. And we got the notification here from Aaron Wilson over on Twitter, which said, free agent offensive guard Greg Van Roten, who had a 75.3 PFF blocking grade overall for the Raiders last season as one of their top offensive linemen, is visiting the Seahawks today per a league source. Van Roten started 17 games last season, a career high for Las Vegas last season. He is experienced blocker at age 34, who would be a strong fit with several teams, including the Dolphins, Ravens, and the Texans. The reason why that I think a lot of y'all should be pretty excited about this is because I know you're looking for a replacement for Damian Lewis, which honestly I was hoping Damian Lewis came over to Las Vegas, but that's besides the point. With Van Roten, and it's somebody that you're not going to have to pay a lot of money to. He is 34 years old. He's probably willing to take that one-year type of prove-it deal. He's got 110 games played, 71 starts underneath his belt. But the reason why that I am really excited about this move from top to bottom is because he was one of the better offensive guards in the league last season, okay? Now, sure, on the right side, he had a right tackle in Jermaine Illuminor, who also had a solid year. Had a good center in with Andre James, pretty good overall. But with Van Rowan, seventh best offensive guard, according to PFF, with 79 qualifying offers, I will say it depends what type of system Seattle is going to run. Like, if you're looking for a power run system, maybe not quite the guy that you're looking for. If you want to go a little bit more zone run, I like that a lot. But the other reason why this is a very, very sneaky player that could end up signing with Seattle is how many Seahawks fans out there want them to jumpstart their running game? Yeah, I, I think a lot of y'all would, right? The brand new running back coach, Kennedy Palomalu for Seattle, really liked Greg Van Roten and thought that a lot of the things that they did, when you go back and you look at the way the Raiders ran the football last season, they ran to the right side a lot, and they would run behind right tackle and right guard Greg Van Roten. So when you look at these numbers here, according to PFF, over 1,000 snaps. That's a big win for a guy who's 35, 34 years old. Overall PFF grade of 75.3. The pass blocking grade's pretty solid there. I know it says five sacks, and there were definitely games where he struggled, and the game that the whole Raiders offensive line struggle was against the Chargers where Khalil Mack had about six sacks. But when you realistically look at Van Roten from the start of the season compared to the end, one of the things that he just did not get enough credit for was when you look at the Raiders running game at the end of the season when they had decent quarterback play, right? Like they had Jimmy Garoppolo, Brian Hoyer, Aiden O'Connell. <laughs> That's a rough, rough start there. But when... The quarterback play got a little bit better in Aiden. You also saw a running back in Zamir White, who is nothing even close to the running backs that Seattle has, have over probably 400 rushing yards and over the last four games. Like, dude was churning out some big-time yards. So when now you consider the Seahawks' offensive line, no disrespect to Anthony Bradford, worst-case scenario, you're adding a little bit of competition here. And the way that I kind of explain Greg Van Roten to my man Smitty is, He's a really good six-man on a basketball team, right? Like, you need to have that good six-man. Worst case, Van Roten can be that swing guard at left guard and at right guard. Smitty, what do you got for me? Listen, Greg Van Roten it seems like he's going a little bit under the radar here, and that, might, that may be because he is 34 years old on the tail end of his career, but I looked at his PFF grades and how he's kind of graded out over the past couple of seasons past age 30, and he has significantly improved a lot better than the beginning of his career when he was you know, kind of struggling to stay on practice squads in yep. and out of different rosters. So if he's somebody who could, Seattle could get for cheap, and maybe not, maybe not start every single game, but 
be another body in that interior offensive line that John Schneider uh, and Mike McDonald can depend on, then I would be very in favor of bringing a guy like this in. Yeah, I think when you talk about also good locker room fit, uh, I talked to a few of the Raiders players that were close to Van Roten, and they said, like, he's almost got, like, that dad type of figure to him where he's really going to be able to help up, help teach some of these younger players, really get their footing into the NFL. Because I know we talk about the dudes that stick around in the league for a long time. For you to bounce around the NFL, I mean, for him to be on Seahawks practice squad in 2014 and still be in the roster, like, you need those type of, like, grinded out type of guys. And that's exactly what you're going to get with Greg Van Roten. So here's your opportunity. This is what Chat Sports is all about. I want you to be the GM. This could be the pinned comment on today's show. And if you don't know what that means, it means... This is the number one question I want all of y'all to answer. You're about to get hit with a YouTube ad break. I want you to scroll on down and let me and Smitty know, should the Seahawks sign Greg Van Roten, type Y for yes, or type your N for no. I'm going to type my Y for yes for Seattle because he is a good depth player that you're going to be able to get cheap and also would be a good fit there, has some ties with Kennedy Palomalu on top of that. And at this point in free agency, right before the draft, if you can find somebody that started 17 games last season that has the numbers that he did for PFF, that also gives you, I think, what you're looking for in the running game for less than $3, 4000000 million. I mean, I don't know about y'all. I think that's a hell of a steal. Coming up next here on Seahawks today, we got a brand new top 30 visit scheduled and I know a lot of people out there might be you know wondering who that could be we'll dive into it here a little bit more because it's a big boy on the interior if you don't already know man one of my favorite places to get tickets is game time and I know you guys don't know me the way that you know Smitty or no Tyler but I've been trying to save up for a wedding my dog Chuck which yes this is actually his picture He's an expensive guy on top of that. I've been trying to save up for home. And the reason why I love game time is because you get last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed, and all you got to do is use promo code CHATSPORTS. And I love game time. They definitely offer a lot of different things here for a lot of viewers out there. And it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but for me personally, I love the fact that you can watch concerts. You can watch theater events. You can go to a game. And not all companies, you know, realistically – have something like that. But buying tickets to your favorite events, y'all, it shouldn't be stressful. So snag the tickets without the stress. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your very first purchase. One of my other favorite, favorite things, and I'm telling you right now, one of my bucket list items is I'm making it out to Seattle. I want to go out to Seattle. But if anybody out there is like me and you're like, I want to travel to Vegas, I want to travel to Dallas, I want to travel to Seattle, you can go on your Game Time app, look at that city, and look at the events that are going on. One of my other favorite things about game time is the all-in prices. How many times if you go buy tickets to an event, right? Like I always say on my show, imagine buying a gallon of milk for three bucks. And then you go up to the cash register and they're like, it's a $6 gallon of milk. You're like, how did that happen? With other ticketing apps, you get the ticket, you go to check out, and then they add all their taxes, all their other fees. And you're like, I thought I was paying 100 now I'm paying 215 bucks. With game time, you don't feel like you're getting bamboozled. So you'll see the all-in prices there. Super easy to use. And if my dad can buy tickets on game time, all of y'all can buy tickets on game time. So if you're wondering, hey, how do I get this hookup? This link's going to be available to y'all down in the comments and down in the description of today's show. Remember, code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. And if you don't know how to spell it, it's right down there. C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S. Shout out to Game Time for sponsoring Seahawks today and shout out to Game Time for creating memories because at the end of the day, I go to events like this to create memories. You might not remember the score, but 10 years from now, you're going to be like, you know what? I went to that awesome baseball game. I went to that awesome hockey game with my dad, with my grandfather, maybe with Smitty. All right, coming up here next on the show, let's talk about this top 30 visit with the Seattle Seahawks because they are looking at Northern Iowa defensive tackle Christian Boyd. And if you're wondering, well, Mitch, Talk to me a little bit here about Boyd. Matt Holder from Bleach Report had this to say. Christian Boyd is an intriguing FCS small school prospect. He has a stocky build with good weight and plenty of upper body strength. As evidenced by his 38 bench reps at Northern Iowa's Pro Day, he can also be disruptive against the run and as a pass rusher. However, Boyd's best position in the NFL remains unclear. He has the physical profile of a nose tackle, but he struggles against double teams and plays more like a three technique. Still, he's worth taking a flyer on during day three of the draft and seeing what he can do in training camp. I'll tell you what, 
38 bench reps. I don't know if I could even get three for what they have to do. But I totally agree with Bowler here. Like, if you're able to take a flyer on it, do it in round seven, round six, to me, there's no such thing as a bad pick. And if you have a lot of confidence in your coaching staff, if you have a lot of confidence on your guys in the interior, why not take a little bit of a flyer there? Six seasons at Northern Iowa. First team all MBC in 2023. Second team all MBC in 2022. This stock does appear to be rising as NFL teams start to become more knowledgeable. And that's just kind of what this time of the year is. But I would say for a defense that still needs to add a few of the big guys on the interior, I know you got my guy Jonathan Hankins, but you need to add depth. And I am in the belief of you can never have too much good depth on in the trenches, whether that be on the offensive side of the football, me with the Greg Van Roten, or on the defensive side of the football. When you look at his stats from last season here in 2023, he played in 11 games, 43 tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, three and a half sacks, one pass defender. I mean, even in that picture that you see, he is long and lanky compared to maybe what you would see in some other defensive tackles. But Smitty, I know you were talking to me about him before we got this thing going. Tell all the 12s out there. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and act like I've watched 5,000 hours of Christian Boyd tape. That's but good. what I what I will <laughs> say is that most of Seattle's top 30 visits are with projected day three picks, right? We've talked about John Reese Plumley, um, and we know John Schneider in the past yep. has hit the jackpot with guys like Tariq Woolen, with guys like obviously Richard Sherman back in the day, Earl Thomas. These day three late round sure. picks. The guy knows how to strike gold when nobody else kind of sees what he sees in prospects. And I, this is another guy who I, I think is rising up boards a little bit. He's gaining more interest from a lot more teams out there. And as somebody who's versatile and able to affect both the pass and the run, I think there's a no-brainer that Seattle should look into this and uh, get to know the guy. I'll tell you this right now. If you watched 50,000 hours on him, my biggest remark to that is you got to – Smitty's really been struggling, I think, with the Pornhub ban down here in Dallas. If you're watching 50,000 hours on an FCS prospect. But you know what? Hey, I, uh, I've been there myself, right? All right, let's get into the scouting report now. Thick build, good weight. I mean, I'm going to say, and it's something that everybody knows, it's always very hard to evaluate talent, especially on tape with NFL, college football, and then you look at somebody in the FCS, especially in the trenches, I do like, though, that the fact that he accelerates off the ball with quick reaction, like, that's just one of those things that I don't really think that you can teach all that much. You either got it or you don't. Physical at the point of attack, like, I want a player that's coming from an FCS school to carry that little bit of a chip on his shoulder because nothing's going to come easy to him in the NFL and nothing's going to come easy to anybody. But, like, I want somebody, when they're out there on that field, they're like, you know what? I got to work twice as hard. I'm from the FCS. Like, that's the type of determination that makes it on some of those great Seahawks defenses that you used to see. Short arms, which is what it is there, but I think that's also probably why he was able to do 38 bench reps. Stiff hips, lacks rotational strength. Again, you're hoping that with a good training staff, you can get a little bit more of that hip flexibility, and if he's able to get a little bit more strength, get some of the good coaching down, who knows? He could end up just being a solid depth player, might just be a practice squad guy, but in the sixth, seventh round, Take a shot on some upside. So now I want to know this. Who's your guy? Because we all got one, right? Name a player you want the Seahawks to draft in 2024. Like, there's got to be somebody out there. Now, since we're talking a little bit FCF schools, like, I'm not saying you got to give me a lower-level guy. If there's one guy from the draft, maybe it's somebody on the interior next to a Jonathan Hankins. For those who don't know, I beat Jonathan Hankins in a wing-eating contest. True story. Look it up. But I want to know one player. Put your stamp on it. A player that you want the Seahawks to draft in 2024. Now, I know we're getting here to the very, very end of today's show, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Hopefully, you clicked that like button. Also, I hope that you guys uh, continue to tune in here. I know I'm not the normal host that does a lot of these videos, but if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you got those notifications turned on. If you don't know how to do it, there's a little bell underneath the video. You just click that, click on. That way, anytime Tyler, Smitty, you ever see me again, drop a video, you get notified just like you would a text message, just like you would an email, maybe a booty call as well. All right, I'm heading on out of here. Enjoyed uh, hanging out with all the 12s today. I would say that if you guys get Greg Van Roten, I'm going to be pretty, uh, pretty upset as a Raider fan.